Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to talk to you about the wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, besides just the smoke. Uh, but let's talk about some weather that's kicking off your um, weekend and more. Currently 54 degrees outside. It's going to be a high of 80 degrees. So if you guys are planning on being out and about and don't need to cool off and just want to enjoy the outdoor activities without getting too hot, today, Saturday, Sunday, pretty much all your perfect days to do it. It's going to be going into a good weekend. If you guys have anything planned special, according to the National Weather Service, where I get this information from, it is a good option to do all that stuff. By Monday, you can expect some hazes coming in as well, which brings me into some news items as well. So I'm going to start off with some state news and then going to bring it back to what happened here locally. Um, so you can thank California for all that smoke coming into Montana from here in Missoula to as far as Billings, Montana. State air quality monitors uh, put the Billings area just at the moderate range, so which is consistent of yellow. Um, Thursday, which is yesterday, meaning that people who are sensitive to, you know, uh, poor air quality should limit their time outside. Um, wildfires in central and northern California are devastating communities. Mind you, it's not a laughing matter. Uh, at least six people have died, according to the Associated, Associated Press reports. Thousands of homes are either under threat or already lost. Many vineyards in the uh, California area have been lost to many fires over the last year. Basically, all the smoke is getting kicked up just over 8,000 feet. So it's basically kind of arcing over Nevada and Utah and just kind of coming slamming down towards Idaho, Montana area, according to meteorologists. All right. But let's split. So that's kind of what's happening with the, uh, some of the uh, weather and some of the, um, the news that are happening in Montana in terms of smoke. And we can expect to see some more smoke happening uh, on Monday. So let's talk about some things that are happening locally. Um, in Missoula, there was the groundbreaking ceremony. I talked about it on my wins on Wednesday's show. And um, we had a little groundbreaking. So we had a bunch of people from many organizations come in and they uh, did a cool little brown, uh, groundbreaking. Many uh, um, representatives from many uh, local uh, organizations that are partnering are all under one roof campaign, which is part of Families First Children's Museum. Name is going through a name change soon. Um, Missoula Community Media Re Missoula's Community Media Resource, formerly known as MCAT. Uh, and also, you got Spectrum Discovery Center out of the University of Montana. So everyone's kind of gathered around. It's going to start the shoveling process. So it was a great turnout, for, and a lot of people showed up. All right, so let's talk about uh, some other news that are happening in, in terms of national news. I kind of skipped the national uh, news from Wednesday, but it kind of harpens on some of the things that are happening on here. Uh, Russia continues to interfere with the American democratic process um, and that key actors from lawmaking to administration offices to President Trump himself have taken few steps to significantly address that threat. Social media is increasingly become a distorted landscape as one expert witnesses, uh, witness testified before a Senate Intelligence Committee meeting on Wednesday, arguing that the counterfeit content on these networks is eclipsing real American political opinion. Whether ads be purchased via social media platforms to boost content uh, to you, uh, whether or not you want to or not. So uh, I don't know. That sentence was weird. It's probably because I wrote it. Uh, Facebook announced on Tuesday that it has disrupted a new political influence operation with suspected links to Russia. The operation involved more than 30 fake accounts that posted a 9,500 uh, 9, posts and 150 ads for an audience of 290,000 followers. So basically what Russia is doing is creating um, fake profiles, um, basically generating money and revenue through there to release some stuff. Of course, Trump chaired a meeting of the National Security Council last week uh, on safeguarding elections that resulted in new directives to address the threats. His his former Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert recently told Yahoo News um, that he that he is concerned about who's minding the store in terms of developing strategy strategy for cybersecurity. So it's not necessarily that people are trying to hack into the White House. It's that people are basically hacking into the American people's lives. So that's one of the things they are trying to figure out with an open platform where you can basically instant message somebody from across the world. Um, it's it's very uh, unclear about how U.S. is kind of moving forward with trying to prevent these things from happening. Facebook has vowed to prevent any kind of these sites from 
coming up, and they've uh, deleted many accounts that have uh, promoted these kinds of things as well. And that was part of uh, my Wednesday's report. Uh, of course, at Wednesday's uh, Senate Intelligence Committee hearing on foreign efforts to use social media networks to interfere with American democracy, one expert ca uh, char characterized Russian influence operation content as less news, more memes. So I'm going to end it right there, and we're going to go into some uh, wonderful uh, new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And then when I come back, I got your city council report. So here are some of the brand new programs that will be airing on MCAT. I am very excited for these ones that are happening this weekend because there's a lot of really good programs. So guys, check it out. And when I come back, here's some city council. And they're going to be talking about uh, what they're going to do with the Oregon Field, uh, which is the Osprey uh, baseball team. Uh, their field is losing money. The U.S. must continue or increase military aid. Yes, not only that, but we still have to continue to pay up. As one analyst put it, Christine Fair at Georgetown University, she said it's like abused wife syndrome with Pakistan. And that may be an unfortunate comparison, but there's something to be said for it. The U.S. must pressure India on Kashmir. Well, that's a whole other ball of wax, right? In other words, the U.S. can't do what Trump has been doing lately. We love India. India's our best friend. India and us get along great, as opposed to those other guys. That's got to stop, says Pakistan. You have to respect us. And by the way, you've got to stop lecturing us all the time on human rights, on Taliban, on Al-Qaeda, on all the things that happen in Pakistan while you're still giving us aid. And you're going to have a smile on your faces and you're going to put up with it. <coughs> so, I'll leave you with this. Should we pay? Are those reasonable prices? Because I have a hard time imagining that it's going to come to anything else. What is it we can do to create harmony, peace, interaction between peoples of different religions? Most of the world is really multi-religious. Oh, is that Homeland Security? I don't know. <laughs> so the first point he made was a very beautiful insight. It is the sacred duty of every individual to have an appreciative understanding of other people's religion. Mark his words. Not just a nice thing. It is, if you really want peace, if you really want to become enriched by diversity, it is the sacred duty of every individual to have an appreciative understanding of the other person's religion. Now, those of you who have heard me speak before or, or know me, may realize that one of the important persons in my life was our very own <clears throat> Mike Mansfield. We talked about uh, native Montanan ambassadors. Mike Mansfield was right up there. And it was Mansfield's service in public affairs that inspired me to go into the Foreign Service. Now, those of you who remember Mansfield or have met him, know that he was sometimes a man of few words, right? Uh, I remember I had just gotten my first assignment. I was actually up on Capitol Hill at the Mansfield office. He walked in, the senator, he looked at me and said, so, where are you going? I said, Senator, I'm going to Kuwait. <clears throat> Pause. Been there once. Hot. <laughs> and after three years, what else could you say? <laughs> but Mansfield said something else that has stuck with me. And in fact, it too was a kind of a inspiration when I founded the council. He said, it's always better to hear what the other guy has to say.
hey guys, City Council is going to have to take a back seat to Pre-Critic. So let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. Hey, you remember uh, famous literary children from back in your childhood? Well, imagine them growing up becoming old, stiff workaholics, which means this is basically Hook again. Think about it. Christopher Robin stars Ewan McGregor, Haley Atwell, and a whole bunch of other people in this movie. Uh, basically, back from the Hungered Acre Woods, a famous boy in literature comes back as an adult. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, he's not sure. Okay, so the whole idea of this is become a disgruntled adult only to find that by holding on to his happiness, can he truly find peace with his family and himself. This isn't a hook movie, but it sure sounds like it. Brad Garrett from Everybody Loves Raymond stars in this movie as the stuffed donkey Eeyore, um, and the movie's called Christopher Robin. Up next, we got, hey, do you like X-Men, but not X-Men? Well, here's the movie for you. This movie is called The Darkest Mind. It's basically a bunch of tween kids um, based on a tween book series tweens just kind of uh, doing things that tweens do. I don't know. I mean, if it's something that you uh, kind of expect uh, or whatever, I'm pretty sure it's based on the book. This always seems like it's something uh, based on the best-selling novel by some lady who wrote her book on a, a Blackberry, just like the lady who wrote the uh, Fifty Shades book. Anyways, it's actually true. She wrote a lot of her books on her uh, Blackberry. Look it up. All right, next up, we got a movie which basically uh, makes fun of the spy genre once again. Uh, you like spy thrillers that follow along the lines of Night and Day or Austin Powers? Like Spy, you know, with uh, Melissa McCarthy. Okay, but of course this movie f doesn't follow one bumbling female, but two fumbling be females as they stalk their ex only to be wound up in a world of spy and thriller and um, cloak and dagger, blah, blah, blah. All that. Anyways, this is uh, this movie goes sideways and the, everything that you, they think they know gets uh, blown out of proportion and they end up using their weaknesses in their real world as strengths to overcome the obstacles against villains or blah, blah, blah. That's usually how it works. And you uh, can save yourself uh, $11 on a movie ticket. Um, so, those are your new movies that are coming out. Um, I want to uh, promote once again uh, all the MCAT stuff. So if you're interested in finding out more about MCAT and making your own movies, um, not <laughs> not to be compared to maybe some of these movies that are coming out in Hollywood, hey, they have more expensive cameras, but if you had an expensive camera, you'd be able to make movies like this too. Think about it. So if you're interested in getting a foothold into MCAT, you go to MCAT.org and you can learn all about MCAT. How do I... Uh, request event recording, submit a program, and you can register for summer camps. So I'll have to change that because summer camps are over. And you can click on this link to uh, watch our high-resolution video of our zombie camp anthology that just came out last Friday. So you can check all that out. It's already a week old. It's old news. It's uh, stuff that's happening there. Um, if you want to find out more information about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. And just before I go into uh, city council, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of tease from our zombie series, Zombie Camp. So without further ado, here is uh, Z-Day plus 10. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Mace Camel, and today we're back with another video. Before I want you to get... Bef What's up, guys? It's your boy, Mace Camel, and today we're back with another video. Before I want to get into the... What's up, guys? It's your boy, Mace Camel, and today we're back with another video. But before we get into that, I want you to smash that like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and comment down below. Hashtag zombie killer for life. So we've all probably heard the recent news of the government legalizing anyone to kill these undead creatures. Pretty crazy, right? <laughs> Funny thing is, I've been doing this sort of thing before it was legal, so I'm kind of a pro. I've had the idea to go to a zombie-infested area and test out my new drone to film myself slaying the undead. Let's get into it.
And just so you guys know, that, that ending part with the whole drone footage, it's supposed to be found footage, so usually drones don't produce audio on their own. Just a little bit of a technical background for that as well. All right, well, let's talk about some city council. So the city of Missoula is moving forward with partnering up with Logjam Presents, which has uh, had a long-standing relationship with the city of Missoula with the new top hat renovations, uh, the recent purchase of the Wilma, and not to mention uh, the, um, the Kettle House Amphitheater that uh, opened up just last summer. So they're going to be taking on some um, lease duties to basically put in uh, more shows and try to generate money from the uh, baseball field, which, you know, um, hey, baseball season's only three months, maybe even less of the uh, year. So there's nine other months they have to pay for this field in terms of lease and stuff like that. So is it, a, it is considered a civic stadium. So the city of Missoula came together for the admin finance to figure out what they're going to do with this. So here's Mayor John Ingen. He talks about solutions to the financial issues of Oregon Park. The fact of the matter is that uh, we have uh, about $120,000 of debt service on that facility uh, today. And uh, the lease, <coughs> pardon me, uh, that's held by Mountain Baseball, Missoula Osprey, has been paying the freight on that debt service. Uh, if you look around the state, uh, other uh, professional baseball uh, teams in the state are paying a fraction of that, typically. Uh, the folks at Mountain Baseball stepped up when we did the refinance on the stadium to make sure that the facility remained in public hands and viable. Uh, and they've done uh, yeoman's work in, in keeping up their end of the bargain. Uh, that lease has become uh, unsustainable for baseball in Missoula, and we've been long looking for alternatives to help uh, defray uh, that cost and continue to pay for debt service. We had originally uh, considered bringing to the Redevelopment Agency Board and you a refinancing package that would have invested additional MRA funds in buying down uh, the mortgage in effect um, and uh, as a function of serendipity uh, we heard from a local businessman who was very interested in putting that stadium to work and was willing to have a conversation with us about making something happen. We pulled that refinancing package from the MRA board and sat down to negotiate. Uh, Nick Chicota representing Logjam Presents is here. All right, so uh, Nick Chicota. Um, we'll speak on this as well. So, of course, um, he's the owner of Logjam Presents, uh, which is based out of Top at Wilma and the Kettle House Amphitheater. And he talks uh, a little bit about uh, the, their plan for Oregon Park. I anticipate probably three to five in the first year, um, and then on a regular basis, four, four to six concerts. So from our standpoint, the amphitheater is, the Kettle House Amphitheater is 4,500 people. So most of the shows that are appropriate for that venue, let's say 5,000 and less, will go to that, will go out there because we have a permanent stage. It's more purpose. I, I um, am not uh, trying to deal with always the potential conflict with baseball schedule. Um, so we have more freedom there. And, and our goal in the, uh, in Ogren would be to have it be more of the seven to 10,000 and do fewer shows. So, like I said, four to six, maybe up to eight, depends, but I, I would anticipate four to six shows. Um, relative to parking, we'll have to assess the, the shuttle situation. We're on, on a typical 45, 4,000 person amphitheater show, we're shuttling uh, 1,000 to 1,300 people from the top hat, uh, using 10 shuttles, 10 full school bus shuttles. Uh, and it's very effective, and I think it also helps the downtown businesses quite a bit. Every every restaurant around us is pretty full prior to the shows. All right, so that was uh, um, Nick from uh, the Top Hat. Uh, I mean, Log Jam presents. Um, so the biggest concerns of many council members uh, is the lack of parking. Uh, that's always going to be a big deal. And, of course, when they have these events, uh, parking is always a huge issue. Um, I go out and shoot the Bonner Mill Town Community Council. And just for floating, uh, they have a lot of issues in terms of people illegally parking near their property. So um, with these kind of concerts, it's kind of hard. Uh, many of what they've been trying to do is with shuttles and that kind of thing. And since it's already so close to the center of the town, um, one of the biggest concerns a couple – one of the uh, city council members was asking about Silver Park. Silver Park is the park that is adjacent to – to um, the Allegiance Field, Orgren Park, 
uh, Osprey baseball field. There's like uh, 500 names for that single field. Anyways, uh, it has caused some issues, but of course the motion was approved solely because the city didn't like the idea of a Civic Stadium losing money and open up the, their venue for outside sources such as Logjam Presents. So they move forward on this for the uh, consent agenda on Monday. You can speak f about it and talk about it a little bit more as well. Um, they have public comment at the beginning of every city council meeting starting at 7 p.m. in the city council chambers. Parks and conservation, one of the biggest things that are happening in the city of Missoula is uh, their uh, zero waste uh, resolution, or they call it zero by 50, which um, the whole idea is they wanted to uh, um, decrease the amount of uh, waste they put into the landfill by 90% by 2050. Chase Jones um, starts us off um, what works and what doesn't work in terms of recycling. Single stream recycling, which is commingled everything in one bin versus source separated recycling. And it gets at the issue of, of what this China policy really gets at, and that's contamination. Um, it, it's not plastic that's the problem, it's that uh, the plastics that we're, we're sending or previously sent to China are contaminated um, and it, it no longer works for them um, to, to recycle. And so, you know, that, that's one, one issue. Um, and so it, it really is a contamination problem. Having said that, that reinforces a lot of the tenants um, that we hope uh, are highlighted in the plan. One of those is, I, I said it last week, um, recycling is super important, but uh, a tenant of zero waste in this plan is we can't recycle our way to zero waste. That is a guiding principle, and, and getting at that uh, is that focus on midstream and upstream solutions, which, you know, upstream is consuming less, basically, and midstream is, is reuse and, and other options. And then, hopefully, um, once we refuse, reduce, reuse, all that will be left um, it will be recycled, and so that should be a small option at the end. All right, so uh, Chase Jones, uh, part of the uh, Zero Waste Initiative, their first step was initializing Chase Jones in the position of this. So for the last year, Chase Jones has been working with many organizations here in town, and many of those organizations, uh, like Climate Smart Missoula and all those places, have all been working together with Home Resource since 2014 to push this initiative forward. Um, Chase Jones is kind of like the person who is given the presentation, but he represents many other uh, people's uh, organizations to move forward on this. So, and he, uh, so basically, you want probably want to know what's been accomplished thus far. And here's Chase Jones with the response. All that the city has committed to is funding my position to do this work. Um, and I guess that isn't a slam dunk in FY19. I certainly hope so. Um, and my family does as well. And then we talked a little bit last week and in the plan about the baseline waste study as well, which was, was funded in FY18. So that is funded and carried over into the FY19 um, budget, I guess, when, when approved or adopted. Also, a couple weeks ago, I presented some new budget requests, um, and so uh, I would be remiss not to bring those up. Um, those requests were, were uh, two that pertain to this plan. One is an FTE to help in the energy and climate efforts with the city to work with me. Um, a big portion of that would, would, would be to help implement the zero waste plan, um, and then w we have lots of other energy and climate initiatives as well. All right, so basically, um, <laughs> this whole kind of meeting uh, uh, with Climate Smart Home Resource and many other organizations who are also there uh, have been working on this plan for many years now, education and current adoption of a pledge to reduce the amount of trash we put in our landfill. Jesse Ramos uh, of the City Council thinks that the recycling is a potential profitable avenue for Missoula's future. I think that uh, any success as far as addressing climate change uh, will involve, um, unfortunately, the almighty dollar. I think that when something is profitable, then ultimately humanity will shift towards that. I mean, you look at Elon Musk and his solar panel roofs. You look at uh, wind turbines. As soon as things start to become more profitable and economic, I think that we will see a greater shift um, from our society, and I think that this is a good start. Um, to that. So I appreciate that, and I, I will be supporting the, the motion today. Thank All right. You. So that was Jesse Ramos giving his support. Um, let's see. Uh, here's Abby Husteth. She's with Climate Smart uh, Missoula, um, and she talks about waste research since 2014. 
um, the zero waste bucket um, or kind of action area has been part of our cl community's climate smart action plan since 2014 and there's been a lot of work happening on this uh, issue since then and, and earlier. But since 2014, we've learned that um, solid waste actually accounts for 10, about 10% 10 of our community's um, emission, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so this plan really represents an important step um, to address not just responsible use of resources, but also reduce our community's carbon footprint, um, supporting our community's larger uh, carbon neutrality goal. So we're very much in support of this plan, and thank you for your time. All right. So uh, moving through, um, we got a couple more uh, comments from people in the community. Here's one um, back from uh, Nick, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Nick Shakota owner of LogGen Presents, about how he's initialized his own policy within uh, all these uh, Wilma, Top Hat, Kettlehouse Amphitheater, and how they have moved forward on creating a more ecological um, venues, basically. You know, for us as a company, being identified as a green company, I think has a lot of marketing value, um, both with our customer base um, in Missoula and with artists. And I think likewise with the city, having that kind of positioning and, and reputation is is has it maybe an unmeasurable but a, a definite benefit for the community to have that kind of branding associated with it. So uh, we're big supporters of the program, and I think it's uh, the city taking the lead will cause other businesses to do the same. All right. So uh, many of of the many things that uh, Nick Shakota has done within LogChamp Presents, he's made biodegradable cups, um, little pla basically replacing the plastic um, in many of the venues if they do it outside. So th and they have a, a better cleanup process along those lines as well. So I want to end things with a little bit of a sour note. Uh, Michelle Cares uh, plays a little bit of devil's advocate. Um, so here she is. When I think about those projects. And when I think about some departments, specifically like the Parks Department or the Health Department, there are a bunch of things that those departments do that don't lend themselves to this initiative. When I think about some of my neighbors or some family members, I think it's extremely likely, unlikely that there's um, going to be a groundswell of changing opinions on waste. And um, I just wonder if this is merely for the good feelings of having a plan that that looks nice and won't be able to succeed. Um, so that's where I'm at. I, like I said, I'm feeling conflicted, and I would like to hear from other committee members about their response to that feeling. Of course, uh, many of the responses to the committee is that um, throughout the city council, uh, a shared consensus is about Missoula is very behind on the times in terms of recycling and reuse in the community, which is uh, this initiative, 2050, that's 32 uh, years from now they want to reduce the, uh, the waste. So figuring out many ways of just kind of cutting things down in general is becoming a huge issue. Um, many people want to recycle. And then a lot of times, a lot of it takes a lot of education. So what a lot of uh, Home Resource has done in the past is basically have more workshops and forums about how to recycle and those kinds of things. You can always look them up by going to Home Resource's um, website. I don't know exactly on the top of my head where you can find it, but if you go to Home Resource, you can learn everything you need about it. Google Home Resource, and you can go to their websites about their zero waste initiative along those lines as well. Uh, there are a lot of ways to get things going in communities, and like Seattle... Uh, of course, I got to refer to some of the bigger uh, cities that do have uh, fairly larger recycling programs, which has uh, big trucks come through neighborhoods on a weekly basis, um, uh, pick up uh, recyclables, and they actually uh, garbage. Uh, they the city has worked with their garbage companies. Um, in their cities to basically find anybody who throws recyclables inside the trash. So a lot of times, uh, you know, like maybe the city of Missoula could pass an ordinance to find people who don't recycle. But that's a, that's a whole other can of worms that um, I really doubt that the city's looking into at a short-term um, solution uh, going into the future. So that's one of the many things uh, you guys can check out by going on to Parks and Conservation to the City of Missoula's website. You can go to City of Missoula, which is ci.missoula.mt.us. You go to your government. You go to Agendas, oh, Agendas Webcasts Minutes, right under where it says City Council. Of course, it might be a little small for you guys at home um, or on the internet, depending on where you watch this. Um, but yep, and you can see all these upcoming community events. You click on the agenda, 
and it brings you to a nice page where it tells you uh, PowerPoints. So City Rezone, ooh, amazing. And you can look at all these files right here. So you click on here, and usually the video goes right towards it. So if you look around here, these are all the uh, exhibits, applications, staff report, all sorts of nice, beautiful materials that you guys need to go into the meeting knowing exactly what they're going to be talking about. And I think it's a oh, great and wonderful thing. Uh, they're going to be talking about some of the things in the committee meetings that I talked about today on Monday. So you guys can look forward to that. Um, I also uh, won't be here next week, so it's going to be a weird, uh, it's, it, it's, it's been a weird couple of weeks, uh, you know, summer camps. Last week I had to take a week off because of zombie camp. This next week is more of a personal uh, holiday that I'll be taking next week as well. So um, I'm going to only miss a couple of days but it's it's not enough it's enough to constitute me not doing the morning show for next Wednesday and Friday all right I have an art clip by our very own Rick Phillips um, and this is uh, pretty much the last time I'll get to play it because um, you only have until next week to check it out it's also first Friday so after this art clip I'm going to tell talk about your art guide as you go into first Friday <laughs> Many of those art installations will be taken down next week, so you got to check that out before it's too late. Kicking things off for your art is this thing right here. It's a, a cali uh, calligraphic journey. Um, calligraphy? Calligraphy? Calligraphic? Wow. I should stop. All right, anyways, so that's what's happening. Um, for your first stop is uh, the artist shop. Uh, Rebecca Smith's art work showcases diverse possibilities of art calligraphy. Her many, uh, I can say calligraphy, but I can't c say calligraphic for some reason. Her many years of study have led to both traditional and innovative di uh, discoveries utilizing a variety of media. Um, up next, number two, we got, uh, um, let's see, Jamie uh, Moe of Kala Lily Studio. Bathing Beauties is hosting uh, Jamie Moe, owner of the uh, Kala Lily Studios, graduated from the Massachusetts College College of Art and Design in 2005, BFA in photography. Uh, of course, photography has always been her love. She sees an experience in art of all forms using her creative whenever she can, from painting to woodworking to jewelry. So you get to check all that out at Bathing Beauties. Up next, we got Berkshire Hathaway uh, featuring work by Laura Blue Palmer. So Laura Blue Palmer is a collection of oils depicting estrial abstracted western landscape and realistic wild birds created by Montana artists Palmer. Uh, no two paintings are quite the same. Each species or landscape is carefully studied worked, work of c color and space exploration. Up next, we got Wild Colon Blue. This is going to be at Radius Gallery. All these start at 5 p.m., just letting you guys know, disclaimer, uh, first Friday in Missoula. Uh, it's the first Friday of the month, obviously, which is why it's called First Friday. And it happens from 5 to 8 p.m. at many of these art studios. And uh, Wild Hashtag, um, Wild Hashtag, no, Wild um, Colon Blue is at the Radius Gallery. Start your art walk early at Radius for a cool dive into the wild blue. A uh, new exhibit featuring two painters and 15 potters, wherein the painters are wild and potters are blue. So you can check all that out at the Radius Gallery starting then. Up next, at the Public House, there'll be uh, 
joined by artist Heather Schwartz for her opening on August 3rd at the Public House today. Uh, she'll be featuring a series of new large abstract paintings. Uh, Moon at the Bottom of the Pan is a abstract series exploring the uh, Dichon uh, Deconomy. I'm terrible. D you, you can say the word, but you can't read it. Deconomy of the color solidified but fractured self uh, perceived pieces of ourselves against expansive feeling of connection to a seemingly endless cosmos. Cool. Uh, the Birds and the Bees and Elemental. So The Birds and the Bees is an art installation. And then another art installation is called Elemental. And this is at the Four Ravens Gallery. Birds and Bees, uh, they just expanded the Four Ravens Gallery. If you've been in there, they've really just kind of built into that rug store that was next door. So you can check it out. They have a lot more art they're showing off. And art you can also buy. And you can enjoy some cool little knickknacks that they have there if you so choose to go. People you may know is the name of this art installation. This is Pieces Have Not Been in Galleries Show, Fun and Imaginative. This show runs until August 30th. So this is going to be at Academy Gallery. Kirk Jackson is wrapping things up for your uh, art walk at the Clay Studio of Missoula. The Clay Studio of Missoula is proud to present the solo exhibition featuring the ceramic works of current artist Kirk Jackson. The reception and rhythm of throwing on a potter's wheel establishes a defined structure in Kirk's pottery making process. No step is rushed and att attention to detail helps him precisely control each step in success successfully creating his work. Through maintaining rigid controls throughout his process, Kirk's finished works are approachable, handmade, functional forms that reflect warmth and individuality. Nice. So there's a bunch of art for you guys as well. I'm going to show you another art clip of art that's going to be taken down pretty soon. So uh, you guys better check it out before it's too late. And this is happening on, th this will be ending on August 8th. And this is from the Zootown Arts Community Center. And it features, uh, basically the theme is bowling. So when we come back, I'll talk about all your Saturday events since Friday's kind of breezed by with your first Friday events. Uh, so when I get back, I'll talk about events. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey, do you guys want to know about um, things and stuff? Hey, it's time for some events. Hey, you want to know what's going on in the city of Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net is the place to go. And you have a couple things happening this morning as well. You got all your uh, Camp Mo Fun uh, being featured at uh, Mismo Gymnastics. You got Roots Acro Sports Center, which is doing a wrinkle in time gymnastics. Horrible, horrible movie, but maybe it's a good gymnastics thing. I don't know. I'm not judging. I have no stake in this. Um, kids Bounce and Play, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Uh, all this stuff is happening now until about 12 some of them be doing some afternoon activities as well but these are for kids age 3 to 12 roughly uh you got a bunch of yoga fitness family fun time at mizzo gymnastics there's a whole bunch of stuff 
Tiny Tales and Storytime are starting at 10.30 today at the Musical Public Library for you want your kids to get engaged with the reading, it's a perfect opportunity to do all, do all that and more. Uh, let's see, uh, Science at Spectrum Discovery Center, Wednesday through Saturday, Spectrum Discovery Center is the place to be from 11 to 5, and it's a good place to uh, get your kids interested in science and learn about the way the world works. It's just a bunch of activity stations that kids can learn about, and they got a bunch of uh, um, employees there that can help you um, figure out what's going on. Um, they got a uh, cribbage and bridge at uh, Missoula Senior Center. Um, but of course, they have a whole bunch of other things happening um, for Friday. Uh, first Friday is happening. I just kind of went through your art guide as well. But if you guys are interested in going out tonight, uh, Tom Cash is going to be playing at the Union Club. You got the Dodger Mountain Man will be at the Top Hat Lounge. You got uh, uh, Pixies and Sleigh Bells rock music, which will be at the Kettle House Amphitheater tonight at 6.30. Let's skip on over. Let's start with some Saturday events. Hey, if you guys are planning on going out and about this weekend, Farmer's Market is a good kickoff for your uh, Saturday morning uh, to start your Saturday off right. And from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., you guys can enjoy some fresh produce produced by our local uh, vendors here in the city of Missoula. Um, and that happens from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., all in the downtown area, Pine Street, by the Red X's, and as far as the... Uh, underneath the Higgins Bridge, so get your trolling on. Um, introduction to whitewater kayaking. Hey, it's a good opportunity to learn a new skill. Blackfoot Clarkwork Rivers, uh, this is a two-day introduction to kayaking. So if you are interested in kayaking, it's good to actually take some classes because uh, most, most people actually turn over and they don't know how to use their um, speed and momentum to flip them back up. So a lot of times people are caught underneath the water when their boat flips and they're basically kind of semi-strapped into their kayak. So just so you guys know, it can be very dangerous if you don't actually, because uh, you're supposed to wear a helmet when you're kayaking too. But that's just that's as much as I know. And you can find out more information if you go to zootownsurfers.com to find those classes and more. Community Health Safety Expo. Hey, if you're interested in getting free healthcare checks and safety advice, it all starts at 9 a.m. and it goes until about 4 p.m. And they have free uh, group run from Run Wild Missoula starting at 9 a.m. They have uh, lab screenings from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. of course is the Healthy Health Safety Expo where they're gonna talk to you about everything that you need to know and the good part is, it is that it's free. So let's say you might have some maybe kind, kind of pains that won't go away and you're just kind of like, oh fine, I'll just finally do this. Since it is free, I might as well go check it out. You go to Community Health um, Center and go check it all out. Um, Montana Baby Dance. Downtown Dance Collective is uh, teaching two-month to three-year-olds uh, for music and movement, dance to develop and engage and enrich as you learn about brain development and parent-child interaction. So this isn't necessarily for your child. This is for uh, parents and their children. Again, they're really young children. Um, open hours and tours of the Moon Randolph Homestead. Moon Randolph Homestead uh, during the summer does a bunch of tours. Um, if anybody is interested in learning about um, homesteading and about uh, Missoula's home owned, um, Missoula's owned um, homestead ranch, which basically, if you're a, a, a resident in the city of Missoula, you have stake in the Moon Randolph Homestead. And why not learn about it? Because by the end of, of the, uh, towards the uh, beginning of the harvest year, they'll be harvesting apples and they'll need help for that as well. You got a two-day class, found object, mosaic, Zootown Arts Community Center, gather up your chipped and broken treasures and join in this fun mosaic class with Patricia Thornton. This is a two-day class, will take place Saturday, August 4th, and Sunday, August 5th, both from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Things to break or snip, broken things, unwanted things, sometimes uh, to attach your treasure to. So if you have old memories and you have old jars that you really like that are broken, you can make some mosaics with the Zootown Arts Community Center starting at 11 um, and goes until 2 for Sunday, Saturday and Sunday starting tomorrow. Printing, summer art classes for adults and teens. Missouri Art Museum has been doing a lot of um, art um, instructions. Sukkah uh, Warobe obtained a BFA in printmaking from Northern Arizona University in 2006. Um, MFA, uh, a Master's in Fine Arts in Printmaking from the Montana State University in 2011. And uh, um, M.Ed. in Curriculum and Instruction from Montana State University in 2015. So from 1.30 to 3.30 tomorrow, uh, $20 for non-members, $18 for members, you guys can engage in some printing. Let's see. 
what else is going on tonight as well. I'm going to skip right into the night. There's a lot. Usually there's barely anything that happens in the afternoon on Saturdays. The, uh, they have a bunch of classes, but I'm just going to skip ahead. But they got Era of Mega Fires. So you guys want to learn about all these fires that are happening in town, Swan Valley Connections. Swan Valley Emergency Services, Montana uh, DNRC, Swan Unit, North 40 Productions, and the U.S. Forest Service are pleased to present the Air Omega Fires to the Swan Valley Community Hall in Condon on Saturday, August 4th at 7 p.m. Cookies and beverages will be provided. It's free and everyone is welcome. So it's, we live in an era of mega fires, and they're going to be there to talk about this. So if you're concerned about fires and if you live in areas like the Swan Valley, which is um, forested areas in some of the back roads and just kind of figuring out how to deal with some of these mega fires. But let's just kind of talk about some of your late night Saturday events. If you guys are interested in doing anything um, later tomorrow night, you got some DJ music at the Badlander with uh, Chris Moon. Um, Mizzou Outdoor Cinema is going to be at Head Start School. So it's the, the North Side uh, Community um, Engagement Group. And uh, it's a good way to watch a free movie and a uh, $5 suggested donation. They want to be able to keep running this every single summer. So as soon as the sun goes down, they'll be playing a movie every single Saturday at the Head Start School. Uh, lead guest at Lola Hot Springs. Um, it's going to be some miscellaneous uh, music as well. It's going to be at Lola Hot Springs. Dusk is going to be at Union Club. Um, and then you got the last band at the top hat, which is Oslot Wizard. So those are some of your Saturday night events as well. I do have a quickie for your Sunday. Uh, here's a nice little Sunday quickie. Uh, it's Family Clay Workshop um, August session. So um, the Clay Studio of Missoula hosts a session with uh, parents and their children. And this is $35 fee, but this is from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., which, you know, the, the cost usually uh, costs for materials and instructions. All ages are welcome. Um, additional adults and children with families. So if you have uh, two persons, it's $35. Any additional person is $15 per individual. So you can RSVP at, if you go to the Clay Studio of Missoula.org. You can also call them at 543-0509. Again, that number is 543-0509. And that's the Clay Studio of Missoula. You can find out all these events and more by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. But that pretty much does it for me. I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp.